I was inspired to write Undetectable for a number of reasons. Um, I guess one of the impulses was seeing a lot of um, stories about gay people, about queer people, and um, and us sometimes falling into the trap of portraying uh, more of the trauma or the negatives of that experience rather than the positives. Um, so I had that sort of impulse behind me. But also, as well as that, there's so much going on right now in the LGBT community and specifically with gay men. Introductions of new drugs, legal ones and not so legal ones. And uh, everything was uh, shifting and changing. The, the ecology of our sex, our relationships, everything. So it felt like um, a really great time to talk about all of those things and, and, and find a story of this very, very moment. Um, but also one that's really positive and uplifting. And um, the story is really a story of recovery and, and a, it's a love story, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what attracted me to Tom's play is I like love stories, um, but I like offbeat love stories, off-centre love stories, ones that challenge you, ones that transform you. And this certainly has that. It's um, truly all about love but about the complexity of it, about the complexity of intimacy, of honesty, of compromise, of connection, of sensuality, of how much you want the other person to, to, um, to exploit you, if you like, and, uh, and, and how sexy that is, but what you, you want them to respect you and you want them to understand you, you want them to see you. And that play, that, the play digs into all of that in a way that's really funny and um, intelligent and perceptive and um, um, identifiable, something you can strongly identify with e in each person. Each of the, the in the couple are people you swap back and forth with identifying with. The story of Undetectable is two lovers on the first night where they're going to make love. It's not the first night together. They've been seeing each other for a couple of months and they've been doing the impossible, holding back from intimacy, from sex. And then tonight's the night and suddenly you realise that while they've been being romantic and holding back, there's been all this stuff bubbling up inside them, all of their history, all of their baggage, all of their need, all of their love, all of their observation of each other, all of the things they've ignored about each other. Everything comes to the fore. So it's all those things that you get when you first take your clothes off in front of somebody and they take their clothes off in front of you and suddenly it all becomes too real. And over the process of the play, it's real time uh, in one bedroom as they navigate all of these things. They sort of have to go over all those hurdles, including like political differences, um, different um, past traumas, different present traumas, different, different types ideas of, of masculinity, friends, identity, race, all of the stuff that we're roles. all talking about right now. Yeah. All comes out in that moment. 100%. It comes out in sex. And so there they are. It's a bed. All the stuff that you have under your bed, all of the, uh, um, we literally have all this stuff underneath the bed, which signifies all the baggage that you have in your life and in your mind and in your heart and in your sexuality. And, um, and the audience is completely surrounding the bed. So the idea is that the audience are in the bedroom with you. You're kind of like the drapes hanging <laughs> on the wall. And you'll, you'll fly on the wall, seeing what happens between other people. And hopefully people, it's wonderful to watch people getting sucked into the action, um, the um <laughs> maybe a bad choice of word and the, uh, <laughs> they get drawn into the action and um and start to um lose their own inhibitions in fact about being there in the room with those people and just um are emotionally attached to them now actors are so incredible freddie and lewis they really bring it in that space. They're not intimidated at all by um, the impending crowd. And they're so vulnerable, but so funny. And so, and natural, so loving so real. and natural. It's um, such a joy to watch, you know, two men um, play out that relationship in such a space. I guess the old fashioned word is chemistry. They have mm, great chemistry. They really do. Undetectable is by a young writer. So it's very now. It's very... Are you a millennial? Um, or are you generation? Somewhere on the border of that um, Gen Z, I guess. I don't know where the line is. I think I'm millennial, I guess. And so, you know, it's, it's, 
It's a very young view and a lot of plays are written by older writers like me. And uh, it's exciting to hear what's going on right now, what people are concerned about right now, um, all the things that are on that all the 21st century issues around sex and love and intimacy and how they map uh, against the timeless issues of sex, love and intimacy. So, you know, without it being something that constantly talks about um, modern apps and things like that, it's not really about that. But it talks about how we've got to a position where people now feel like they can claim um, certain uh, s- certain considerations around their history, their mental health, their identities. And, and there's people are frustrated about that, but also everyone wants to benefit from that. And the play really n- nails that. And I hope one of the unique things is that it's it's a uplifting um, gay play. Uh, and of course, there are lots of those, but it's about recovery. And it feels like that's a sort of phase of uh, a gay person's life, which maybe because it's uh, deemed not the most dramatic. Um, perhaps that's why it's not been explored so much in stories. But this is the point where um, the characters are beginning a journey of recovery and of healing. Um, and it's still tricky. It's still um, lots of drama. And of course, it takes you to a place um, which is uh, emotional, powerful first. But really, the the energy of the play is uplifting. And because being a gay person watching shows about yourself um you want to come away feeling invigorated and, and changed in a way that feels positive. So I really hope the play does that. Yeah, we're hitting a position now where gay people are finally, you know, gradually, but now it's now palpably becoming a part of the society mm. as opposed to outside of it or something that has to be considered by it. We are in- integrating in a particular way and there are kind of thawing pains, uh, if you like, or growing mm. pains that come with that. So this is one of the first plays that really starts to uh, where people have a a sense of ownership of the bigger picture as well as their their smaller picture. And there's a friction in that, isn't there? Because you get the more acceptance you have. But the reality is um, we're also different. Our lives are lived differently. And I hope the play also celebrates um, the difference between two gay men falling in love. So although on one hand it's really universal and it's about two people falling in love and all the hurdles that we all fall through in that, but also it's really specifically about what it's like to be a gay person um, right now and how and the conflict well, com- between those two yeah, factors. Yeah, because they're two very different kinds of gay people mm. and yet they have a lot in common and yet they are totally different, or at least they feel like they're totally different. Mm. And that's gay people being seen as individuals rather yeah. than monoliths. And there's is, such a diversity within that group. Yeah. Um, so it's been and such a joy person, to explore. Within yourself, there's diversity within an yeah. individual and the play really digs into that. That you may look like something, but you're many things. Mm. And you change. We all change. I think the most exciting thing about this show is um, the, the energy of it, the, that it's so comedic and romantic and, and fresh and how and the energy the excitement is seeing how the audience gets swept up in that. So there's some great moments where the audience will go, Ooh, or you shouldn't have said that. And they completely have forgotten that they're in a, in a theater mm. and they just start reacting emotionally and enjoying that, enjoying being connected to it. And that's not easy with an English audience. Mm. It feels like an event. Every time we watch the show in here in the round with a community gathering together of all sorts of different people watching this love story play out, um, and watching each other, seeing each other's reactions and being really aware of that. Um, people are really responding in a way that's the most exciting. Like everyone's chatting out in the bar, talking about the issues, thinking, what if that had happened to you or that's happened to me or I completely understand that. Um, so the the sort of buzz that it's creating every night is just Yeah, that is so great. Exciting. And the way that the cast can navigate that. You can see yeah. them playing with the audience's yes. um, emotions and responses to them and how they surf on those. That's all very, very exciting. So, I mean... For me as a director, I'm not one day in rehearsal was I bored because it was kept growing and kept making me react. And now I, I come to basically every performance in the theatre. And again, I'm just constantly watching the audience's varied and, and layered responses. It's very exciting.
Undetectable opens at the King's Head Theatre on Wednesday, the 12th of February. And you can book tickets on www.kingsheadtheatre.com right now.